Hi, I'm Mrs. Jardine. Uh, and today we're going to talk about phylum platyhelminthes, which are the flatworms. So the examples are like planaria, those are freshwater flatworms, tapeworms, those are parasites, tubularians, and blood flukes. So if you Google shape of life, they have a great video on flatworm characteristics. So that is what we will do in the classroom, or you can do it at home. But one of the characteristics is that they are soft. Obviously, they're flatworms. They're the first organism um, to have three germ layers. And they're flat. There you go. That's why they're called flatworms. And they have tissues and internal organ systems. Like I said, they were the first animals to have three germ layers. So that would be the endoderm, ectoderm, and mesoderm in the middle. They have bilateral symmetry, which means you can cut it in half. And it'll be the same on both sides because the prefix bi means two. So you can cut it into two. Like humans have bilateral symmetry. You cut me down the middle. I'm the same on the left and the right. Uh, flatworms have that characteristic as well. They have cephalization. Cephalization, what that means is that all of or most of their sense organs are located in the anterior portion of their body. It helps them. It's a benefit through evolution to help them to see their predators if they're coming at them and get away or to see their prey and go toward them. That's cephalization. So remember I said they have three germ layers. Because they have three germ layers and they're the simplest animals that have three germ layers, their body plan is acelomate. It's called an acelomate. So that means there's no coelom, which means there's no space between the mesoderm. So here's the ectoderm. That's the outer layer. This is the endoderm. That is the inner layer that lines the digestive tract. And this is the mesoderm. So this example here, this is a planaria that is a free living flatworm that lives in like the bottom of lakes and stuff. And we are actually going to do a little mini lab if you're in class where you could play with them. If not, you can Google them, like Google planaria. I might have a video coming of planaria. And they were pretty cool to look at. They're like 14 millimeters long. They're fun. So here's a planaria here. Uh, they are very thin, like I said, and they're flat. And they don't have like a circulatory system or a respiratory system. What they do is they use diffusion. If you remember, diffusion is moving a molecules from high to low. So if there's a high concentration of oxygen in the water and a low concentration in the planaria, then it'll diffuse into the planaria. So that is how they get all of their oxygen and they get rid of their carbon dioxide. So it just goes in through their thin skin. And that is also how they um, get the oxygen and carbon dioxide dispersed through their body, through diffusion, through further circulation. So the free-living flatworms, so not the parasites, they have organ systems for digestion, excretion, response, and reproduction. So you can see here, let's see how to get my arrow back. I don't know. Uh, these right here are called flames, or their eye spots. And on a planaria, which they look like this, you're to draw one, okay? And they look like they're cross-eyed, but they can't, like, see you. They just see it like white and dark is what they can see. Look at that. Amazing. Oopsies. So they look like that. Okay. So bilateral symmetry divided down the middle. It's the same left and right if I could draw straight. And then these are their eye spots. They sense light, sense light and dark. And then in the middle, they have a pharynx. So the right, I'm not even going to pretend to draw that. Uh, this is their pharynx. It's like their mouth. And so if you have um, an egg or a hot dog or something that you feed your planaria when you have your planaria in your petri dish you can see them extend their pharynx onto the food and then they bring that back in to their gastrovascular cavity which is the opening where they have extracellular digestion to digest that food and then their waste come out that hole in their pharynx as well i call them manus mouth slash anus manus because it goes in and out the same hole All right, so they're carnivores. Like I said, they eat hard-boiled eggs or they eat um, hamburger. They're carnivores or they're scavengers. So they might eat some dead fish on the bottom of the lake floor. They have a gastrovascular cavity. That's what the pharynx leads to. And that is their hole where digestion occurs. And then the food leaves the gastrovascular cavity that was not digested, digested out their pharynx, their manus. So here is an example of parasitic flatworm. That would be tapeworm. So tapeworms are found common in dogs or they used to be found in um, other animals. But in the United States, we all of the animals have been tested. So they don't sell animals with like cows or whatever, sheep, whatever meat you want to buy at the market or the store. Um, they make sure that they don't have any of these um, 
parasites inside them that are tested for that. But right here, this is the hat is called the Scolex. And then every, so the head looks different on every species of tapeworm. But all of the rest of the body of the tapeworm looks like this. So it's made of these little squares. They're called proglottids. And in every square has ovaries and testes because that's how they reproduce. They come out in the feces. So like if the tapeworm, or sorry, say a cow has tapeworm and then it poops then these little proglottids, these little squares go in their feces. Now, if the species spread out and they kind of make a little cyst around the proglottids to protect it, and see a bunny comes and eats the grass with that cyst on it, then the bunny will get the tapeworm and then inside them they reproduce. And because they're parasites, they don't need a complex digestive system like the planaria would that's free living because all they do is they live in the intestine and then they absorb all the already broken down nutrients. So all they have to do is diffuse it. They just absorb it. So they don't need all that, but they do have a reproductive system. And this right here is a fluke. So they feed on blood, tissue fluids, or cell pieces of hosts. So these are suckers that help them attach. They're adapted, adapted to attach very well on the intestine. So they have like, if you look at microscopic images, it's really cool. They have hooks and suckers. They literally look like fish hooks and they embed themselves in the intestine wall so that they don't come off. Just the proglottids break off in the feces. So since they have thin bodies, they don't have a need for a circulatory system either. They use diffusion to get any nutrients or to get rid of carbon dioxide and any waste. So diffusion, remember high concentration to low. They don't have any heart or blood vessels, blood gills, or anything like that. So if this were diffusion, let me see, I'll show you. If you don't remember, we talk about diffusion every single chapter. So you probably think, yeah, I get it. So then it would go this way. Diffuse from high to low. Okay, excretion. Uh, planaria, free living flatworms, have flame cells. Flame cells are cells that filter and remove excess water from the body. Or from the body. So if they live in the water, they don't want to take in too much water blow up, right? So then they have these things called flame cells that get rid of the excess water. They also get rid of metabolic waste. So like what would be in your urine um, for a human, it's more, it's concentrated. So it's ammonia and urea. In response, we do that activity with planaria and we'll like cover up the half of it with light and dark. So you can see that light and dark and you can blow things and it blow things. Um, like you take a straw or like a pipette, you blow something in water in there and you see that they respond to that. And their response is even, goes evenly around their body, so the nerve net. Up here, because they have cephalization, they have big chunks of nerves toward their anterior portion, to the front of their body. That's called ganglia. Ganglia is groups of nerve cells that control the nervous system. So it's like their brain, but it's not called a brain. It's called a ganglia. And since parasitic flatworms do not interact with the environment, they do not they have a bit even less complex nervous system. They, I already showed you the eye spots. They can head near the anterior portion of the body, again, cephalization, um, which helps to sense light and dark. Uh, they also have, they can figure out if there's stimuli in the water, and then they can say oh, they have positive chemotaxis. Chem means chemicals. Taxis means to move. So if you have positive chemotaxis, you move toward the chemicals. If you have negative chemotaxis, you move away from it. So th they have some specialized cells that can detect stimuli like chemicals. So if they like the chemicals for whatever reason, it'd be positive. They'd go toward it. If they're like, dude, that's going to kill me. I'm going to go away from it. That'd be negative chemotaxis. Um, uh, they want to gather information from the environment. Why do you think? They want to have, um, go toward or away food is what they want to do and avoid predators. So here is the eye spots I was telling you about. This is the anterior portion. Anterior means front. The posterior portion means back. Um, they have cephalization because they have the eye spots here. They have the ganglia here. Um, their pharynx is in the middle. So that kind of, um, it isn't in the front part like ours is. The pharynx leads to their gastrovascular cavity. You can see here that is their hole that the or like the cavity that holds the food for extracellular digestion. Here you can see that the genitals are on both sides. You have the nerve net the whole way down. Super beneficial. We'll talk about one in a sec. These are all the different systems. The free living fat, flatworms move in two ways. They have cilia on the epidermal cells. They collide. Epidermal is like this. This is your epidermis right there. See it? It's your skin. So it's their outer surface. Is their epidermal su surface has cilia on it? Do you guys remember what cilia are? They're little tiny hairs. So 
really be little tiny hairs that would help it to glide. And then they also have muscles that help it to spin. Um, they can twist and turn. So when you blow that pipette of water on them, they'll like roll. Because they're like, I don't like that. Please stop. And then they roll and they try to get away. They obviously can respond to stimuli. This is just a picture showing you the flame cells that gets rid of the ammonia and the urea and the extra water. And talks about the ganglia right here, which are underneath the eye spots. And that it's important to know that it goes equally on both sides so that if they're cut in half, they have all of this stuff. Speaking of cutting in half, reproduction. So most free living flatworms are hermaphrodites, which means they have both male and female parts. Um, two worms join together in a pair and deliver sperm to each other. Uh, the eggs can be laid in clusters and hatch within a few weeks. Another thing that planaria especially can do is called reproduction. Or, um, regeneration. What they do is you can cut them and then they can grow back. So if you cut this plant area here into two, this will grow back and that'll grow back. Sometimes if you cut it into three and it's big enough, it'll grow three new plant area. And that's a type of asexual reproduction because it doesn't take another plant area to do it. It just cuts it. If it gets cut or ripped in half or like a fish eats half of it or whatever, it benefits it because then the species won't die out if they all get eaten like that. If they just get cut up, then they can grow back. So that is asexual reproduction, regeneration. Fission is where they divide into on their own. So that's where it just splits on its own. So this is see what I was talking about, the hooks. These are the hooks and the suckers on the tapeworm. This is the scolex, the head of the tapeworm that embeds itself in the intestine wall so that it doesn't like fall off. And these are all the little tiny proglottids. See how many thousands of them there are? Each square has male and female reproductive organs, so sperm and eggs, testes and ovaries, so that it can reproduce um, in the, once it leaves the body. And this is the head. So these are the examples. Stibularians, free-living flatworms, streamatoda, flukes, usually parasitic. We didn't talk much about those, but this is a fluke right here. And cestoda are the tapeworms. Let me know if you have questions.